Hello everyone, how's your day going? I hope it's going well. And I'm so excited today to be reading to you from an antique pamphlet from my personal collection. This one is called Holiday in Kimono and it is from 1938-1939. It specifically mentions an event that takes place in 1940, so it's pretty easy to date in this case. In fact, this is most, more than likely a promotional pamphlet for that event and you'll find out what that is when I start to read it. Before I do though, hit that like, subscribe, and the notification bell if you already have not and so you don't miss another video from the, another video from this channel, a video from this channel. Don't miss another video from this channel. <laughs> if you are already a subscriber, thank you so much and welcome back to another video. Holiday in Kimono, 1938-1939. And here is some of the artwork on it. It shows Japanese children playing with children who clearly are of European or American descent. This little boy's holding the Japanese flag. You have Mount Fuji, you have cherry blossoms. And I have to wear glasses. I'm not one of those cool kids who can wear contact lenses. So excuse me if the ring light flashes like it just did in my glasses. Greetings to the boys and girls on the other side of the world. As you watch the sun go down, it is just starting to rise to wake up the children of the small but beautiful land of the rising sun. Wouldn't you like to know something about the holidays which the children of Japan enjoy? Of course they have to study hard, but at the same time they are very happy children. Perhaps the happiest season is the New Year time, when, for nearly a week, each day is a big new holiday to them. The entrance of the house is decorated with bamboo, pine, and plum branches, same as you have your Christmas tree. And inside the house, there is plenty of good food ready for the holidays. The mention of the bamboo, pine, and plum branches is very interesting because that is, of course, it's known in kimono terminology, shochikubai, and that is the three friends of winter. And if they are discussing the new year and the Christmas holiday, then wearing a kimono with shochikubai on it would be very appropriate. It might even be getting a little bit late, but it's still something that you would be able, you would be able to wear. And there's the decoration, there's the artwork. I'll be posting the photos, some of the photos from the book on my social media, possibly as an Instagram story, so you can, you can look for that. From early in the morning, the streets are full of people in their best clothes going about making calls or visiting shrines or temples. Children and grown-ups exchange greetings with every friend they meet by bowing politely many times. But the prettiest of all is to see girls in bright, colorful kimonos playing the game of battledore and shuttlecock. And the boys, too, have a great time flying their kites or spinning their new tops. It's an interesting thing to mention that people are in their best clothes, but the prettiest of all to see is the girls, are the girls, in their kimono. Because at this time period, 1938-1939, men had long ago given up wearing kimono as daily wear. It was in the 1880s, 1890s, Emperor Meiji made it very popular for men to wear Western clothing. So at this time period, it would be mainly women who would be wearing kimono still on a daily basis. It wouldn't be till post-World War II that even women would start giving them up and wearing Western clothes on a, a, regular, a regular basis. And then they have their own holidays. The girls have their doll festival on the 3rd of March, and the boys have their boys festival on the 5th of May. The set of dolls for girls represents an imperial court with high officials and ladies in waiting, with the emperor and empress as the central figures. There are also many pieces of furniture and decorations to go with them. In addition to a variety of real sweets, fruits, and flowers, beautifully arranged on tiers of shelves. Mothers see to it that their daughters have the grandest time on that day and invite many of their friends to parties at home. So there is the little child flying their kite, which you can see them here and their kite up here in the corner, and the little girl in kimono. 
And for those who are not familiar with Japanese holidays, Hinamatsuri, the girls' festival, is one of the largest festivals in the year. And when they mention the, the dolls, this, these are huge displays. Now, some people only have room for just, say, displaying the emperor and the empress, so it's a very modest affair. But many families have inherited extremely large displays that have anywhere from three, five to seven tiers covered in a red cloth. And the emperor and the empress are on the top and it goes down. There are court officials, there's ladies in waiting, there are musicians, there's furniture like kimono tansu, there are plates of food. Sometimes there's even lanterns and horses and carriages. So these can be extremely elaborate. If you don't know about the Hina Matsuri Festival, look up Girls Day Doll Festival displays in Japan and just take a look. They are absolutely, they are absolutely stunning. The boys have their dolls representing popular heroes in history and favorite characters and stories. But these are all ornamental and are beautifully arranged as in the case of the girls display. Outdoors, they have another attraction in a balloon-like carp fish made of cloth or paper and hoisted to the end of a long pole. The wind goes in at the mouth and fills out the fish so as to give it the appearance of a real fish swimming up a river. The carp is a favorite fish because it's so strong that it can fight its way up the swiftest streams and even leap up small waterfalls. It is also a good fish to eat. Whoops, skip the page. Children of the poor families are often entertained by social organizations so that they won't miss these great festivals just because they are poor. And there is, there are the carp streamers. And the little boy with his samurai hat. Now, for the boys, you would have characters such as Momotaro and the boy who fought the tiger in the bamboo forest. I'm not sure of the official name for that story. I do know the geisha have a song, Toro Toro Toro, that they play a game to that describes this boy who fights a tiger in a bamboo forest. So they would have these much more militaristic um, samurai fighters for their, for their dolls versus such things as court emperors and empresses. Oh, I'm skipping pages again. This page wants to be skipped. And this is where we get into now you're going to find out why I say this is a promotional promotional pamphlet for and this event in 1940. Japan is a very old country and the Japanese are very proud of it just as you are of yours. Just think 1940 will be the 2600th year since the first emperor of Japan came to the throne and his descendant is still ruling the country. So all Japan is going to celebrate this great anniversary in 1940. What kind of celebration are the Japanese going to have, do you think, for such an unusual and great event? Many plans which will be fitting for the occasion are already made and in which children will also take an active part. One of the biggest events of the year will be an international exposition to be held in Tokyo and Yokohama. You may have some relative or friends living in one of these cities or on this side of the world. This is going to be a great event, a great chance to show the world what your country has done in industry, commerce, education, arts, and science, because every country in the world is going to send its exhibits to be seen and admired, not only by the people of Japan, but also by a great number of visitors from other countries. You may have seen the great fairs of Chicago or Paris. If you have, you will surely want to be one of the visitors to the International Exposition, which will be held in the land of cherry blossoms and pretty kimonos. And it's interesting because they say kimonos with an S. I have seen some people write kimono in the plural without an S, but they specifically use kimono with an S to represent the plural. And there is the Japan in pictures. They have Mount Fuji, and I believe they have Tokyo Tower there and they have apples for almori so and cherry blossoms all over the country so this that's why i say this is clearly a pamphlet for the international exposition now this exposition took place between march and august of 1940 and 
Interestingly enough, only one month later, Japan entered World War II, so September of 1940. So it's interesting to read about this particular event happening right before, in essence, I mean, the rest of the world was already partly at war, Britain and Germany and Europe were already fighting. So this was taking place at the same time. So quite an interesting piece of, of history, a little bit of maybe even of propaganda. So holiday in kimono. There you have it. Again, I'll be posting pictures on from it on my social media. So look for it there. And thank you so much for joining me for my story time. I hope to see you again soon where I will be reading another article, magazine, book from my collection of antiques. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.